Okay, welcome everybody. So today we're going to do a, another review revisit where I uh, give a little bit of feedback on uh, previous reviews for things that I may have found uh, through, you know, more intensive use than I did in the original review. Now most of these things are going to be negative and that's just a fact of the way I do my reviews. But I like to provide as much information as I can, so doing these follow-ups I think it will be helpful to some people. So first thing I got here, this is the Viha 8-inch bi-cut pliers. So if you remember, these have a button, which if you press, it uh, changes the angle, pivot angle. So it allows you to uh, basically get more torque uh, with a smaller capacity when that power button is pushed in. I was using these for a couple weeks and um, I ran into kind of an interesting problem. So I make my cuts using facing away from me like that. And then after I, and then after I make a cut, I'd sit it down like that. So the problem I'm running into, if you can see, just by setting it down on this table, and I didn't even set it down very hard. I was pretty soft. Um, a couple times it actually switched into power mode. There's an intermediate position here that kind of locks the pliers up. So I don't know if that's an advertised feature or not, um, where you can basically put these pliers into locking mode. It didn't, there was nothing in the uh, flyer that said that, but so what would happen is I'd make the cut, set these down, and then when I went to pick them up, I got to go over here and press the button again and put it in the right mode, which is that. Make my cut again. You know, it's it's a feature that I don't know if anybody else has run into this problem, but it's it's quite annoying. So you end up having to basically set that button every time you pick these up. I don't believe that was the intended use of these, was to have to push that button every time you pick them up, depending on how you use them. Now, if I had been in the power mode and using them the same way, and I set them down like that, no problem. But I was I was cutting some higher capacity uh, copper, and so I needed to be in this mode, really, so I didn't have to open them as wide as they needed to be. So I think that feature needs a little bit of redesign. Um, it really almost needs a double acting uh, mechanism where you, buy, you have to do two operations to switch it. So other than that, they've been working all right. But we may do another follow-up if I find any more things happen because I've heard some people break these, have broken these, um, these joints before by putting them into really high, high torque situations. So the second thing up, these Philo screwdrivers. Now, I, first thing off, I love these Philo screwdrivers. They've been great. Uh, I do have one minor complaint, um, but this is probably more to do with the way that I'm using them. If I zoom in here on the uh, on some of the flatheads now, probably what happened is I was using this for something that it was not intended for, like prying. Maybe I was using this to open a paint can or something. I just don't remember. But you can see there the the chrome is actually chipping off on that part of the flathead. That's not what I expected. I mean, I've used those old Craftsman uh, Western Ford screwdrivers to open paint cans for years, and I've never seen the chrome chip off on those. So I... And here's another one that's not quite as bad, but you can see right in there. There's definitely some chrome chipping going on. Here's one that doesn't have too much on the end, but you can see there's a chip right there. So I don't know how that would have gotten there. Um, because when you're prying, you're typically not on the round part. So that may have just been from um, being in a tool bag or a drawer and uh, rubbing against another tool. Who knows? On the Phillips side, I, I don't think I've seen any chips on this, these ones. I mean, if you look at the tip, this is probably the one I use the most, number two Phillips, and it is starting to get a little bit worn. Now, I, I don't, I don't warranty tools for things like this. I consider this basically use. I know some people will take this back, try to take it back for something like this, but it really is just wear. It's not um, a manufacturing defect, in my opinion. But really, I think I've gotten my money out of these, these particular units. 
And then of course the the advantage to these is the really the wooden handles and some people like to sand these down. Um, I've basically kept them as is. I think they're fine. They will still absorb uh, oils even if you don't get rid of the lacquer. There's, it's not totally impermeable. But if you really want to make it absorb uh, oils better you can sand off this protective uh, oil or coating they put on here. So these are still a great buy um, for the price that you get them. Really can't complain too much about them. So yeah, I believe they, they come with a number one which is somewhere else right now. So it's still it's it only ends up being about five dollars a screwdriver which is I think pretty good for this for this quality screwdriver. So not to be a total Debbie Downer on this video here's one tool that I really have been impressed with and I really don't have many complaints about actually this I picked these up about two years ago these are the Viha Dalmax uh, composite calipers so first thing you'll notice is there's no metal here so the, these are made entirely without a piece of metal all the gears internally in here are all made of plastic so the first thought might be well uh, what happens if you mar these surfaces on the inside and you know I've been using these for years and I haven't really seen any wear on these surfaces so this must be a really high glass reinforced plastic it's probably well over 50 percent I think it probably might be even closer to 60 or 70 so the only thing I have to say is it looks like some of the white on here is starting to fade away and I think that's from uh, where, where you hold it when you're moving it. So I'm not sure if they can make those a little bit deeper. Other than that it still works great. It's not skipping any steps or anything. And really for the price it's, uh, it's hard to beat it. I mean you might be able to find some stainless calipers for the same price but I don't know how how good the quality would be. I believe I did a video on this when I did the review for those. If you buy the Starrett caliper case that they use for their standard calipers, uh, you can make a couple of small modifications to the foam insert, and it'll allow the the dial max to fit perfectly in there. So I believe it's just a little bit of a change up here. Cut out some foam there. Cut out some foam here and cut out a tiny piece on the end here. After that everything fits fine and then you have a nice case so it, it would be nice if VIA could come up with a case uh, for these. I think it, I think they would sell a lot more if it had it because right now it just comes in basically a, a plastic bubble bubble pack. So now it's time to talk about axes more specifically splitting malls. So over here we got the Helco traditional splitting mold, some I did a review on not too long ago, probably a couple months. And then we got the Oxenkopf Big Ox splitting mold, which is uh, one of my first reviews that I did. Uh, probably that was probably in what 2016 I did that one. So the reason I even brought out this Big Ox to show you guys, I want to show you some deficiencies I see in the um, in the Helco. That has me more using this one way more than the Hoko. So I brought this up in the review, but the the guard on here it only shows it only goes around the one side. And um, as you can see, that right there is a that right there is a dent from uh, most likely I missed the wedge I hit, and that's a mark from the wedge. Don't really remember. Um, but I wanted to show you kind of the marks that I'm seeing on the big ox. So this is after what three years of use. I got I got basically no marks on the on the axe uh, side. Maybe it's because I'm not splitting very small wood, but I don't think I ever I ever miss you know hitting a piece of wood. But apparently I do miss hitting the wedge sometimes, or either that or it's just slipping off. What's probably happening is I'm probably just hitting the wedge and then it's kind of slipping off and going like that. You can see all the all the little dents here from that on the big ox. So that's the reason why they really need to have a uh, guard that goes all the way around. And this is a much much thicker uh, gauge steel on the big ox than it is over here. So it's going to hold up a lot better than that one would. I'm almost tempted to flip this around 
like I said, I don't really think I miss anything when I'm on when I'm on the axe side. And so a lot of this, a lot of what you see here is not rust. Um, this is what they call pitch. Um, I just basically need to scrub it off or or grind it off. It's not really a big deal. So the other thing I want to show you here about this um, Helco. Check out the mushrooming that, that I'm starting to see here on the on the hammer side. And I really, like I said, I haven't been using this that much. A couple months maybe. Probably less than a thousand hits on, on here. I'm very surprised to see the mushrooming here. I mean, it was warm out when I was using it, but it wasn't a couple thousand degrees warm. Now what that indicates is that this is a very soft steel. Um, and I have noticed I've had to sharpen this a lot more often than I have my other axes. This, this seems to dull much faster than the other ones I have. So, so the advantage the advantage to having this soft steel is this thing's probably not going to ever chip. It'll probably just keep mushrooming out. And um, you can see you can see all the marks here, like where where I've hit the wedges. It almost looks like it's being hammered like a blacksmith would hammer something. So very unusual to see this on a hammer. And you can see kind of one section here where I kind of hit it a little bit off center. Left a really flat spot. So check this out right here if you want to see. So another thing is how this attaches to the handle. Check that out right there. So what that indicates to me is that this this head is moving a little bit uh, when I hit it, and it's actually, you know, basically denting the wood. Look at this is on the uh, the other side. You can see it's kind of doing the same thing. There's a little lip there. And more to the point, it looks like this is starting to come out again. Uh, this piece. So I have to give that a couple taps uh, with a sledgehammer or something. Try to knock that back in a little bit. One advantage to the to the oxen cough system, I think this is they got a patent on this. This what they call the rot band. So basically, they 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 use the same type of attachment that you see there with the uh, circular wedge, but they also put this plate on, which has a wood screw that screws straight in, and then there's a little set. Uh, it's kind of a it acts like a set screw, but it's basically a roll pin right here that keeps this from rotating. But this has worked great. I mean, this this thing has been solidly on there. It's probably had many thousands of hits on both ends. No issues. So if if I had to recommend a uh, a splitting wedge, this is the one to get the oxen called Big Ox. I think they just have they just have some issues to correct on this. Um, I'm not too upset about the steel about the uh, soft steel. That just may be a factor of of the uh, formula that they use. But the other issues with the guard and the uh, handle attachment, uh, they really need to correct that on that, that axe. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. There's just a little bit of an update on a couple of tools I've reviewed in the past. And um, if I find anything else, I'll do another update on them. So that's it for this one. Have a good week, and I'll catch you guys next time.